Let me take you on a journey. Let's imagine the year is 2040, and you wake up to the screams of your newly turned vegan wife, panicking. Honey, there's no soya milk in the fridge. Praying for just a simple peace, or peace and quiet, or just a simple good morning, you do what every good husband would do. You pull out a smartphone app, and you place an order for a rescue package. Within a few minutes, you heave a sigh of relief as you hear the rescue package arriving on its way. So this is the point where I take off the package, and my pretend wife is supposed to come running out on the stage very excited. Why are you so late today? <laughs> Here you go, honey. Here's your soya milk. Thank you. So, so the crisis averted. Thank you. Okay, bye. I'm going shopping. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Pratika. All right. So let's continue on with the journey. Just hang on there with me. So the year is still 2040, and both you and your wife have big days at work. You have to catch a plane cross-country to go to San Francisco for a big client meeting. And your wife, an accomplished architect, have to be, has to be in downtown DC for a 9 AM meeting for a presentation with a potential new client. So both of you get ready. And she walks up the flight of stairs to the third floor terrace and boards her personal flying car. She punches a button, sets the destination as her downtown DC office, and the car takes off autonomously and starts on its 20-minute ride down to downtown DC. As that's happening, she pulls out her laptop and starts reviewing the presentation for one last time. The aircraft lands on top of her skyscraper, and she's right on time for her 9 AM meeting. Meanwhile, you. You pull out the popular ride-sharing app and request a ride to the nearby airport. A multimodal transportation route is planned for you, including ground and air segments. A few short minutes later, a Ridex car pulls up in your driveway, and you grab your suitcase, jump into the car, and you're on your way to the neighborhood word airport, a fancy word for the future airports of the next generation on top of rooftops. You join three other waiting passengers there, and all of you head on your way to the, the airport. Now, I'm sure it seems, this seems like a fantasy to a lot of you, but the future is nearer than you think. But before I talk about the future, let me take you back a few decades and tell you the story of a young boy with a passion for aviation and his dream. As the young and often pampered son, I grew up in relative comfort in the northern part of an India, India in a place called Kashmir. I had the privilege of having parents who let me be myself and let me experiment and pursue my passion for building aero models. Back then, we didn't have a whole lot of hobby stores and stuff, so imagine the grief I caused my parents by taking apart all kinds of mechanical and electronic devices around the house to build my models. Back then, we didn't have YouTube or Google, so they had no way of putting things back together that I had destroyed. But I was fortunate enough to have a very supportive family. Fast forward a few years, after my undergraduate studies in India and graduate schooling in the US and a stint in communications industry, I was eventually recruited to work with the Department, US Department of Defense on drone and communications programs. Drones are relatively new in the commercial industry, but they have been around in the defense sector for many decades. While working with the defense industry, I was like a kid in a candy store. Like every single day was a new experience. I was learning something new. At a routine meeting in DC, I had the opportunity to meet a man named Martin, an aerospace engineer, and he told me that he was building an experimental aircraft. I had never heard the term before, and he explained that something it was, he was building in his home. That night, all my, actually all my childhood memories came flooding back. 
And that night when I went home, I couldn't sleep. And I couldn't sleep for many nights after that. As I started researching and educating myself about this new form of aviation called experimental aviation. And thus began my new journey. I tried to learn as much as I could about this new field. My new journey began, and a few short months later, I got my pilot's license and started flying in the skies. And with the help of my then three and five year old daughters, we embarked on very, our very own journey of building an experimental aircraft in our garage, or pardon me, our aircraft factory. In the picture up there, you can see my two daughters, my helpers, help checking out my workmanship, helping me build the aircraft, and pointing out the flaws. You can even see my partially completed future ride alongside my current ride in the driveway. With undying support from my family, friends, and aviation experts, after 2,000 hours of experimentation and fabrication, Wuzmal, a low-wing, all-metal aerobatic aircraft, was born and took to the skies. Wuzmal in my mother tongue, Kashmiri, means lightning, and what was just the spark that I needed. <laughs> Flying the skies, Flying the skies opened my mind to endless possibilities and the potential our future had. I immersed myself in educating and learning about everything about autonomy, drones, and I realized the autonomy was going to change the way we think about future transportation. With a whole lot of fledgling ideas and a lot of faith and probably stupidity, we started a company focused on integration of drones into our skies. Give or take today, on an every, any given day, there are 10,000 flying aircraft, manned aircraft in the sky. And when you get in a plane in San Francisco and fly to LA, you don't have to worry about it bumping into anything or doing something it shouldn't because air traffic control is managing it. But when you go to the unmanned world and urban air mobility and these, these drones, there are going to be hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of these drones in the sky. The, the manual process for ATC doesn't scale. So what you have to do is you have to build a new, you have to work on a new paradigm and create new technologies. And that's what we started focusing on. So within six months, we had filed patents, we had won awards, and we have put, put a re collaborative research agreement in place with NASA. We established relationships with industry partners like Amazon, Uber, Google, and others, and started working together on building this next generation of air traffic management system. The world, as we know, is changing. Today, drones are being used for many applications, be it surveying, mapping, inspections. No longer are drones a tool for a photographer to take wedding pictures or just a panoramic video. Drones are getting, being used to save lives, for delivering medicines in remote parts of the world, for search and rescue, humanitarian relief. But to make all this a reality, similar to the way when you drive on the road, there are rules you follow. We have to put rules in place for these virtual highways in the sky, so everything can, can manned and unmanned traffic can stay safe and separated, and we avoid collisions. And it's not just about these small drones anymore. With the available airspace and the new technology, vertical, electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, you'll be able to zip across the skies in a matter of minutes, what would take you hours? How can the 18 million people in the city of New Delhi bus best move around? Using the, instead of the two dimensions on the road, using the three-dimensional airspace available to us and riding these virtual highways in the sky, we can cut down the traffic congestion and have rapid and reliable transport available. Tomorrow's airports are going to be all around us. Our rooftops, our driveways, our parking lots are the next generation of airports. Imagine cutting down your typical 90-minute commute from a place called Ashburn in Northern Virginia to downtown DC, which is a typical 90-minute rush hour commute, to mere eight minutes. Or having an unmanned air ambulance rush to the aid of your ailing parents in case of an emergency. The cars of the future won't have wheels. They'll sit on their back and rise up eight feet into the air and they'll help you 
transit between cities and suburbs in a rapid and expeditious fashion, and a safe fashion. But to make all this a reality, a lot of work has to go in. You have to build complex solutions using a combination of technologies, like aviation technologies, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and more. We have to put building blocks in place, just like we have procedures and protocols in place for man traffic. We need to have protocols in place for building these highways in the sky, as you can see there in downtown Reno, stacked highways. And then, how do you ensure that a ride-sharing air taxi in the air is not going to co colliding with an Amazon drone carrying an Amazon Prime Air package, or go flying into a restricted area? We have the technology and the means to manage these virtual highways in the sky and also ensure the safety of the airspace by ensuring collision avoidance. Now, many of you in this room might be wondering, will the sky be full of drones, and how will I ever watch the sunrise on my daily morning walks? First of all, let's take a step back, and let's be honest with ourselves. We really don't go on morning walks. And secondly, in addition to being able to see the uh, sun from the ground, you'll be able to watch the spectacular sunrise from the comfort of your unmanned air vehicle, riding high up into the skies with the birds. A couple of weeks back, I was asked in an interview, what was keeping me up at night? My first gut reaction was the broken air conditioner in my house. Then I realized they were actually talking about autonomy and drones. I actually lay awake at night thinking about what the future holds for us and for urban air mobility, and how it's going to change the way we live the lives. In my lifetime, I wish to see Jetsons, a popular 60s TV show about a family with a personal flying car, becoming a reality. And I hope we as a company and me as an individual get to play a small part in it. This probably looks familiar to some of you. And I'm positive some of you, even though it's Sunday, some of you probably encountered traffic on your way here. But it doesn't have to be that way. The day is near where you'll be able to ride in the comfort of your own urban air mobility or your next future flying car and ride the highways in the sky just like the magic carpet from Aladdin. Those are my daughters. I dream of the day when I'll see my two daughters soaring the skies in the future of transportation. And that day is coming. And at this point, we as a generation have a decision to make. Either we roll up the sleeves and do the work to put the building blocks in place for the next generation and the next phase of transportation, or we resign our next generation to a lifetime of traffic and congestion. I'd like to end with a quote from a famous British sci-fi author, Arthur C. Clarke, who once said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, and I firmly believe that. I hope, I sincerely hope that many of you in this room will join us on this journey, and thank you. Let's take them back so people can land and let people enjoy them. Yeah, later. they can enjoy them after this. Thank you so much for your time. Please be seated while the drones land back.